also put it on your arm as well or just okay. have it so. okay so let me just add mix and then um what another question oh you'll be reading the to somebody reading the comments because i'm not I'll, yeah I'll, okay. I prefer not to have my glasses on. <laughs> I'll have to. And I cannot see it look like the alphabet across the bottom <laughs> of the screen. Okay. Let me just see. No request. Ms. Hicks, can you send a request to join? So someone asked, what's the topic? Um, so we'll be discussing general natural hair care. Hi, Miss Six. So I'm having technical difficulties. I'm on my phone, um, but I am here. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you. Well, I just wanted you to, so I'll let you go first. Um, I just wanted you to introduce yourself and your organization so that we know and the public know um, what you do for the community. So hi, my name is Rohisha Hicks. Um, six years ago, I started my own girls group organization called Visions of Bell. Um, and we're devoted to building and empowering lovely ladies to excel. So for me, it was important to give young girls opportunities that I felt that I didn't get growing up. Like they always tell you like, you have to be this strong black woman or you have to be successful, but they never told me the steps or the process to do that. Um, so I went and decided to um, build like social and emotional wellness steps and using like the principles about like putting yourself first and what does that look like and not just because you're from an urban area that you can't be successful. So we meet monthly um, and then every year we have a self conference devoted to something that's um, for self development for ourselves and we've been doing it for six years. Thank you. And, and I was going to ask you this later on, but I'm going to ask you now because you mentioned the conference. Um, could you just because it's coming up and I think tickets it's coming are coming up. So yes. yes, so August 19th is our sixth self conference. It's called the Light We Carry. Um, and it's basically just about like them realizing after the pandemic that we are the light, right? And not being in spaces and not dimming yourself just because of your environment, just because of what we've gone through. So we'll be coming together on August 19th in East Orange, New Jersey. Um, we have the opportunity, and it's no cap on the age, right? So it's from 12 and up because we have to all realize that there's a little girl in us that is broken, that needs to be healed. Um, and we want to make sure that we have a safe space for that. Amazing. Thank you. I appreciate you. If you have to get off, that's fine. I just wanted you to, to give you your, your moment to talk about your conference and your organization, and I appreciate you taking the time this Sunday. Thank you. So I'm going to log off and just come back on to watch. Okay. All right. I Thank you. Bye. Those frames are everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm just going to start with the quick introduction of myself and a nonprofit. I am going to introduce um, Ms. Sita, the founder of Puff Cuff. Um, and then we'll start with our discussion. And please feel free if you have any questions to post those questions. I will be monitoring um, your, your questions. So please make sure you, you post whatever questions that you have. Um, so my name is Mecca K. Terry. People always ask me, why do you put, why do you say K? And it's because people call me Terry Mecca. So I have to put the K there <laughs> to let them know that my first name is Mecca. Um, so my name is Mecca K. Terry. I am the founder of Embracing My Natural Incorporated Embracing My Natural Incorporated is a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to empowering natural hair care and encouraging natural hair care um, by providing workshops, events, um, and our signature program, which is our natural hair blessing bags. So we were founded in 2018 somewhat informally with just doing workshops in the community, just going to the local libraries and the local schools and talking with the girls and um, the, young, the young boys about their natural hair care and then providing them with items. And then we, um, we created the natural hair blessing bags. Um, so, and I'll talk a little bit more about those blessing bags uh, later on um, in the live. 
So I have the pleasure, and it is a pleasure, <laughs> to introduce Miss Sita Lash. I'm going to read a portion of her, her bio. Um, so bear with me. I want to get all of this information out because it is great. So please just bear with me as I read um, a portion of her bio. Sita is a trailblazing CEO, inventor, and founder of Puff Cuff the renowned natural hair accessory company. As the first and only African-American woman to hold four U.S. patents in this field, I want to repeat that. As the first and only African-American woman to hold four U.S. patents in this field, she embodies a spirit of innovation and resilience. Her personal journey towards self-love and self-acceptance has fueled her drive to advocate for everyone who sports thick, curly, and textured hair. With a distinguished 25-year career as a solopreneur and graphic designer, Sita has brought a wealth of experience and creative flair to Puff Cuff. She has, began, she has been integral in the brand's development and recognition since its inception in 2013. As co-CEO, Sita plays a pivotal role in determining Puff Cuff's overall strategy and product development. I'm tired already. That's a lot. <laughs> Girl, I was going to say that. That's a lot. <laughs> Her leadership and ingenuity were acknowledged when she received the President's Innovation Award from Sally's Beauty in 2018. This was also the year she became a Babson College BWEL alumni and earned two entrepreneurial certificates from Cornell University. See the accolades continued in 2020 when she was named a recipient <laughs> of the New Voices Plus Barefoot Wine We Stand For Her Biz Beauty Business Grant. In 2021, she graduated from the Goldman Sachs 10K Small Businesses National Cohort and became a growth coach for the Goldman Sachs 10 Million Black Women Black in Business Program. She is also a member of the inaugural Amazon Black Business Accelerated Cohort. Her impressive track record was recently acknowledged by Inc. Magazine, who named her as one of the top 200 female founders. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and that's just a little bit. That's just a, a, a small snippet. A small, 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 small snippet. So um, I want to also mention, I know in her bio, I said co-CEO, but she's in part. She's in part. My, my dog is the one. She wanted to get on the camera too. <laughs> I want to, to also, if, if Miss uh, Cedar doesn't mind that I mention also her husband, um, who's also a part of her business um, as well. So I just Girl, wanted the whole, to... The whole family. The whole family. All five of us. So it's, the a, only reason, it's a family affair. It's definitely a family <laughs> affair. So when, so when I say, when you buy a puff cup, you keep my family fed, it's, it's true. It's 100% true. <laughs> and that's amazing. So is there anything that I didn't mention that you want to mention before I get into some, some questions or... Girl, no, that was fabulous. It's interesting to um, to hear it, uh, hear somebody read it, because I'm like, I'm always trying to, I don't know, like absorb everything that I've done. And, you know, as Black women, we get a little uh, guilty about, you know, patting ourselves on our own back and stuff. And um, it's a difference between humility and pride. You know, I mean, I mean, ego and pride right. and you try to, you know, do it all with a humble heart. But I'm listening to I'm like, what is she talking about? <laughs> that girl must be tired. <laughs> right. You know, I think um, as, as black women, we sometimes downplay um, and not not, you know, not, you know, we don't mean to. But sometimes we downplay. So I, I do understand hearing your own bio back. You're like, wow, I did a lot. You know, you sit back and you think, and I'm sure I didn't even mention half of the things that, that you do or have done. Um, so, again, I just want to thank you for taking the time to be with us um, today. I, I truly appreciate it. Um, so, let's, I guess we'll start with a question or two. And, again, if you have any questions, um, 
this is the time to ask right so I'm in the chat. of puff cup here so if you have any questions please um make sure you you post those below so i just want to start with a general question of what does being natural mean to you Oh, being natural. That's that's a good question. Being that and I'm I'm just getting ready to write a blog on it. Um actually. So being natural to me means authenticity. Authenticity and homage to where we come from. Because we have been taught for so long that um What comes, what God gave us naturally is not what's preferred. And it got to the point where it was really like, why am I trying to uh, keep up this facade? And it, 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 it's, it's, and also it means, I guess I said too, it, it just means freedom. Lord, it really does. It means freedom. Um, I just started my, lock journey beautiful like eight eight weeks in and this right here baby <laughs> the freedom I, I, I was like i didn't know how much i was still having to do to my hair <laughs> until i started locking it my both of my son my older two sons oh. are locked okay and they had been you know you mom you should do it you should do it, you should do it and i was like nah i'm thinning in the top you know i don't want to i don't want to have that pressure and tension on my hair and this that and the other and I was like you know because boys have such thick right. hair. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I was like I don't know if I want to do it and then my baby sister which she's 10 years younger than me she did it and she got less hair than I do and I was like "Ooh, you don't look like a turtle you don't look <laughs> <laughs> so I went ahead and went and made the commitment and I'm loving it just being natural, there's so much versatility that we just were robbed of for so many years. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of years. And, you know, the more I've been in this, in this space, I have discovered so much about how, how the hair uh, on African and women, African, women of African descent plays such a vital role in the global economy. Yes. It's yes. just like, yes. really? I mean, and the brainwashing was deep, 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 deep. And it's not just us. It's other cultures and ethnicities, too, about this got to be straight, got to be straight, got to be straight. So, yeah, I was glad my hair actually didn't come out of my head straight because <laughs> I would not be able to do as much as I, I do to it. And you're locked. I love them. It's amazing. Thank you. So with that and thank you for for answering that question what's your and we somewhat somewhat talked about this when we um when we talked um last week um with natural hair you you constantly hear you know if you wear fake lashes you're not natural or um if you wear weave you're not natural or um and again that's open to opinion and, and discussion but what's your take on on that um you know, on how, you know, women maybe perceive other women if they're wearing a weave or some type of cover up. Um, what's, what's your opinion? That is such a, a, t a topic that's really like, it's a double edged sword, it is. right? No matter which way you, what way you take on it, somebody's not going to agree right. with you. Somebody may be offended. Somebody may be hurt. Um, my i guess I, and i really had to figure out my deeper feelings because i've never been a wig wearer i've never been um a weave wearer and it wasn't so much because of trying to cover um cover up my natural hair is the reason why i didn't do it the reason why i didn't do it is because a lot of times the weave or the wigs had some type of chemical in it that when i would put it on i would end up breaking out like crazy I mean my it would come start coming down the, the uh, scaling and the itching would start coming down my face and all and I'm like this has got to be something has got to be in this stuff that um, my body is not liking and that's another reason why I ended up going natural um, from the beginning 
was because I realized I was allergic to relaxing. Right. And hadn't, you know, forever. But my, my, I guess my bottom line can thought on it is if you're doing it to, because you, you need the feel to be or something else than what you're naturally, which you are, then then it becomes a problem right if you look if you look yeah if you look at yourself when you have all of that off and you don't like yourself and you feel you cannot be seen unless you have all of that on then i think it's a psychological problem that you may need to deal with because it's something else and i know i can totally i can totally respect and empathize where it comes from right because we've been fed mm -hmm. so much is this a safe place? Yes, because I do cuss. It's okay, <laughs> we've been. So, I, I as as my kids have gotten older, my mouth has gotten more foul. But I'm still, I'm still, I still don't beat out my mother in the cussing contest, though. <laughs> but we've been fed so much BS, for, and it's generations of being. Right. I mean, fed so much, and then the other thing is. I'm sorry, but black women are so over sexualized. It's ridiculous. I'm probably gonna get in tr trouble for this one too, but um, and this I'm, I'm I'm big at squirrels. Now, if you need to bring me back in, bring me back in because I always got like different stuff um, uh, ideas floating through my head. But did you see the last BET Awards? Yes. Yes. Was it not soft porn yes. like, the whole time? I was like, am I? <laughs> like wait a second yeah. this is an award show and the thing that got me for real was they had the little they had a, a segment on the crown act and wear your crown and be so proud of your, so proud of your crown but then they come right back and this young girl uh twerking on a pole <laughs> and i'm like yeah so you want to respect my hair but you don't respect me and is it that and I'm, I'm, you know, my, my, my oldest two are 20. Um, and I'm like, there's a problem there that that is a couldn't even let my kids right exactly. I, and I was like, that, that that's, that's a serious disconnect that you want to put forth the and it's not. And I'm like, is it media? Is it mass media? Is it is it the, the music industry? What is it that you want me to form like a hoe and but then you want me to say respect my hair right and it's like <laughs> yeah and i was like and i you know i'm not big on award shows or anything else but i was just like wow that is what is that what is that telling mm -hmm. so many people that this is an award ceremony right. yep and that's what every almost every Every single female artist that came on, except for Patti LaBelle, who couldn't see the, the who couldn't see the, she don't make my own words up. <laughs> was, I was like, but she had, she was like, baby, I can't see the words. <laughs> so, but even right there, can you imagine? I, I know when I was, you know, I was the queen of insecurity coming up. <clears throat> because um, I wasn't light skin enough, because my lips were big, because my hair wasn't wavy enough, because my, my little sister is so much more light skin than me, but my brother has the pretty eyes and you know, all of this stuff that mostly family members are putting on you. And I'm like, okay, I'm a grown a woman at now, but can you, I wasn't, there was no way that I was being force fed all of that foolishness as a young girl. So when you're saying what you're saying now, it's like, okay, yes, we have these mothers. So I don't have any girl, I don't have two goddaughters, but I don't have any girl children. But um, like we go through, there's so many people are, that are parents now that are like, I'm never putting a relaxer in my child's head. I'm not doing it. I'm not going down that road, blah, blah, blah. But yet everything she sees in the media right. Mm -hmm. is you know hair, hair that had been bought and it came from eat from from 
East India that's not yours, how do you how do you roll tell that how do you toe that line without becoming hypocritical yourself? Right. Yeah. Or you know you get she they're gonna be out in the world, but it's you know it's like you say you're starting with like an organization like yours. You're starting from here from that 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 uh, core right. that, that's still fresh to say this is well, look we've all been through this insecurity game. I don't think you come here if you come here being secure i would like to know how you do that and like it starts from pre-k right or however right. You know, age that your kids are exposed to or seeing other cultures other people um i remember doing a workshop um earlier this year with natural hair and one of the dads um was talking about his daughter and her hair and how she wanted her hair to look like her classmates hair and they were of different races and so he like had to explain to her like your hair is different mm -hmm. and figure out ways to so that she can like her hair you know at, as is but as you mentioned it starts at a at a very young age it starts at a very young age and not all of us are able to graduate from that because there, there was a comment i just saw that it's up to the mother to teach mm -hmm. well that, a lot of mothers are still having insecurity and um self-esteem issues right. too i mean this is not something this is not something that you get over in a decade. This is not necessarily something that just, you know, you all of a sudden, cause it, 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 I don't know about you, but my natural hair journey was not easy. Right. And mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, I started in 2006 and, and I tell you, and that's before it was right. a movement. It was, right. it was before any of that. And whoo, I mean, it could have been worse, but you know, people wore me. People have way more opinion about my hair than ever needed to say anything to me about my hair. And literally, I was doing it not to rediscover myself or anything like that. I was doing it because I was tired of being the hydrocortisone queen. queen in terms of itching and flaking, and, uh, and you know, not being able to wear black, or I got a big cornflake on my on my shoulder, and it's like I got. I was tired of that. And once it, and I literally just happened to go longer between being able to get in the chair to get my touch mm -hmm. up, that all of my skin just totally cleared up. And I was like, well, I am never going back. Now, I also found out that I'm very, I am probably more sensitive than, to, uh, than others to certain things like, honey, if I, if I wear, before when I was wearing braids, if I didn't soak that hair for like two days and apple cider vinegar wow. <laughs> beforehand, wow. Yeah. they would put it in and my scalp would just it would almost like blow up yeah. it was just so yeah so so um you i think you mentioned this comment already the mother mm -hmm. um has to kind of take charge and i've had you know at, at these workshops and, and talks and events um uh, mothers that just don't know what to do yeah. or even we don't know other than maybe a you know mixed race or maybe um if she's caucasian mm -hmm. and she has a mixed child not really knowing how to take care um of the hair and, and what to do with the hair and so they go to straightening the hair um or or putting chemicals or, or something that's just mm -hmm. a child so it's it starts with that education again early on with the child but also the education with mm -hmm. the mother parent or guardian whomever is taking mm -hmm. the of, of the child um, as well. So I definitely agree with that. Um, so I kind of want to switch Go gears. Sorry. And, um, the dog <laughs> live. He's like, you can't, you can't do that to me. You can't talk in and not, not Go have your <laughs> Go get in your place. <laughs> so I want to, um, well, you know what? Before I even ask that question, since we're talking about parents and caring for the hair, is there any advice that you would give a parent about caring for their child's natural hair? Yes, yes. There's one big piece. Um, well, I probably have a couple, but I'll say there's probably three cores. One is, it's okay to admit you. It's okay to say I don't know, and I need help. It's okay to not, not be sure. Because we have to think that we have come from generations and generations and generations of generations of people who were brought here and stripped of all their traditions. Right. 
you know, and um, made to assimilate in a way in order to be more pal palatable to the powers that be. Mm -hmm. So all, all of my, like my mom, my grandmother, her sisters, great grandma, all of that was about surviving. So in order to survive, they, and, and survive in the, in the, we'll say at the white man's world or whatever, right. they had to be visually appealing. I'm not going to, no. <laughs> this is what she just put up. <laughs> she said a sound of, right. So it's not our fault, right. but right. continuing the foolishness mm -hmm. is our is our is our fault. That's the what needs to be stopped. That's the so I mean because most people think, and then we also, you know, like this this whole Florida thing about not teaching you know slavery and all of that. Um, I don't know who had the accurate chapter in a book <laughs> when <laughs> and first of all it's not a chapter <laughs> but florida has you know they just yeah. outright with it we all been we all been so it's like okay do we be more afraid of the people are just like we ain't gonna do it are we are we more afraid of the folks that are like we're just gonna pretend like we didn't hear right it. so all of us dangerous but we have to stop waiting for for people to teach and we have to go find out and ask questions because you ain't never gonna know what you don't know, but someone else does. Yes. So tap into the network. And one thing that I found about um, white parents or you know white parents that have um, interracial babies or adopted, they, they are not afraid to ask. That's true. Where <laughs> we are so like, you know, I got this. I know this. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, no, it's all a work in progress because we came here. We came here and our parents came here. Like when I transitioned, I had, they, I had no clue what to do with what was coming out of my head. I didn't know I was washing it with white people shampoo and that I didn't need, that I didn't need to do that. I didn't know that water is your best friend inside and out. I'm still trying to do better with that. You know, always a work in progress, but you know, we were trained, you stay away, you be afraid of, you know, no moisture, right? <laughs> no moisture. Um, so that's my first thing is don't be afraid or don't be intimidated if you don't know what you don't know. Second thing, find out why we do the thing, find out why our ancestors or whatever um, did, did what they did, like grease in the Scout. Yes. Do we know why, where, where that came from? Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you where it came from. It came from us working the fields and to keep the insects off of us because the insects didn't like the grease. So that doesn't mean that now we're not in the field anymore, that we need to keep grease in the scalp and clogging up the pores and everything. You had to do what you had to do to survive right. and understand and appreciate where that comes from. And yes, it's a vital part of our system, our, you know, our routine oils, and, but you have to use them in the prop, a proper way. And that was the third thing. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> Stop snatching your hair straight. <laughs> Stop pulling it straight. Cause <laughs> I'm like, everybody is like, when people use the puff puff, they're like, well, I can't get that straight laid look. I was like, first of all, you can, but it's a little bit of a process. But do you know why? Who wrote the rule that we had to pull our hair so, so tight in order for it to look straight? Guess who wrote that rule? That was a way to keep us thinking that straighter is more beautiful. Mm -hmm. Because if you pull, Pull, if you pull the kinky hair, it'll look yeah. straight. So again, that's, that's hidden racism. Yep. I understand if it's a, um, a, a, a look that you like, but we have to be able to achieve that look in a way that's not damaging mm -hmm. and putting stress and strain and tension. I'm sorry, anybody that got their hair snatched up like that for the day, you know you are an angry female at the end of the day because that's... <laughs> That hurts. 
<laughs> head is hurting. <laughs> right. Head is hurting. You've been mean to somebody. You know you want to take it out in the car. I always say, if it feels better to take your bra off and your, your puff or ponytail down, you're using the wrong thing. Elastic bands and all of this have were made to bind thin hair to give it bulk. Well, all of us with curls and texture, we already have bulk. So we just need something to hold our hair in place, not cinch it down. We have to get past this whole thought that if I can't feel it, it must be not, it must be broke. If I, if it's not causing me pain, it must not be working. Right. Mm -hmm. That is a hundred percent myth to keep you in that cycle of always trying to, um, you're always having to repair the damage that you've done to your hair. That's why like people don't understand people that have locks and you see people with locks locks all the way down to their waist it's because they ain't fiddling with their hair on a yep. regular basis yep. all the time the hair is just growing just, just letting They're, it be let it just letting it be mm -hmm. just letting it be and it's like that makes sense yep. the people who do the most with chemicals with product and all of this that that right there keeps you in the same place and keeps you in that trap to tell you the truth right and I think you mentioned three main things, but I think the overarching theme with all of those three things is educating yourself mm -hmm. and not, you know, don't be afraid to reach out and ask questions. And um, I've always been, you know, my natural hair journey when I first started, I was a big YouTuber <laughs> and I was going to YouTube for everything. Um, and, and it did help me a lot. Um, but there's a lot of misinformation mm -hmm. out as well. kind of have to figure out what's good and what's not good. Um, and but you, yeah, and you also have no. to, I'm sorry, one more thing. You also have to be willing to accept the hair that grows out of your head and stop obsessing over the curls that somebody else has. Yes. That's what yeah. I, that was a big thing. I want my curls to look like that. Well, babe, your curls are not going to right. look like that. <laughs> so you, you can, you can do. Hairs are beautiful in this. In right, <laughs> right. But you're going to continue to be upset if you're trying to make your hair look like that other person's yeah. hair. So you have to figure out what works for your curls and be able to, you know, figure out that routine to get your curls to look like what you, what you can be satisfied with. Right. And um, Ethel B mentioned about her son. His hair is locked and he refuses to do styles, color. Um, or anything. He just want his locks to be free and, you know, um, and things like that. And I will say definitely as from personal experience with color, I recently cut off about seven inches of my locks. Um, and it was because I didn't take care of my hair properly. Um, mm -hmm. My hair and, you know, doing this and doing that, um, even being locked and not really taking care of it. So I just chopped off that unhealthy hair and I missed my long locks. Mm -hmm. But it was not healthy at all so um at the B, I agree with your son <laughs> so i'm a lover of color i ain't gonna lie i love color so this is but you see it color is healthy yes You're keeping so there is a way I said, to color I, your hair it, healthy i don't even want to tell you what i was <laughs> i wasn't right. I, know. <laughs> I wasn't doing right um and so over the years, it showed in my locks, you know, with mm -hmm. them thin and, and things like that. So um, I do kind of miss my, my, my length, but it'll now, be back I, next it'll week. Be back. It'll be back. <laughs> it'll grow back. It'll, it'll be back there. You know, it'll be there. Um, so I do want to talk about the puff cuff and not just that item, but you have an entire hair product line and other stuff besides um, uh, the puff cuff. So I want to just talk, or if you can just tell us a little bit more about the puff cuff and your other hair products and tools. Uh, excuse me. Okay, so puff cuff is, I invented this hair clamp back in 2000 and something. And this is, this is one of the sizes. This is the second from the largest. It comes in five sizes. But I invented it because when I was transitioning, um, I was in I was in a professional setting majority of the time where I was the only black person. 
and I was up, up in, up north in Chicago. So I just didn't want a whole lot of attention. I didn't know what I was going to, didn't know how if I was going to like what I looked like any of that. But the way that I found comfort in looking at myself in the mirror and with my natural hair was to wear it up in a puff. So I couldn't, but I couldn't find anything that would allow me to have my hair up all day and not cause me to have that ugly acting headache at the end of the day. And at that time I had an hour commute back and forth and my sons were three years old. No, they were, yeah, they were three and a husband. So it's like trying to just manage being mom right. and being decent. And it was like in my hair, plus I had sinus cert, I had sinuses, sinus issues and migraines. It was like, this is stupid that my, my hair is causing me to be in so much pain, just to be able to wear it the way God gave it to me. Mm -hmm. That's where the puff cuff came from. So it's the alternative to elastic bands. So the way I'm wearing one right now, uh, um, most people are like, it works with locks. Yes, it works with locks, yes. Swiss braids. It works with everything as long as you have texture. So this is the biggest one. So basically what the puff cuff is doing, actually I got in two of them. <laughs> what the puff cuff is that doing like the, is. That you have on. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Is that the mini one that you no, have? No, actually this is the teeny the that teeny. I have on. Mm -hmm. So the way it works is, so this is the smallest okay. one. The smallest one we have is about the size of a quarter. So the. The way it works is you gather your hair wherever you want it to be, but you have to gather your hair first. And, and you clip the clamp around the base of your hair. So I'm going to use the, the original, I mean the, the junior. So this one is about three inches big. It's about the size of a tennis ball. And really it's the size of your fist when your hair is gathered. That's kind of the size that you want to choose. So it's like this. So technically I can use the next one down, but I'm just, I had the junior out, so I know it'll work. But you just overlap the hooks like that. Yep. Cool. And then you just let it go. Right, so it's your hair expanding into it that push, pr puts pressure on the, out, on the clip, pushing outward. So that, that's what keeps the hooks closed. So it's not the clip trying to keep itself closed around your hair because everything you know, like oh that's a banana clip or oh that's a pony comb that i had from the caribbean first of all none of us are walking around looking like ponies <laughs> so and i have to work on myself with that word too ponies are for a certain race of people and we don't look like ponies so that right there was always yeah my ponytail okay yeah we can go buy a ponytail and all of that but naturally we're not walking around looking right. like ponies who's walking around looking like ponies so we have to be very careful of our words because in a little girl's hair head that she wanted to, you know in my day it was a ponytail was for white girls and pigtails were for black girls well who wants to look like, like a pig facts <laughs> <laughs> you know so it's like let's not continue Let's not continue to do that to ourselves. You know, let's 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 call it for what it is. That's that's hidden racism. So, <laughs> so I've used the mini on the front. So so just like do a little front thing, you know. So as like I said, as long as your hair has texture, it will work. And my the more sizes you have, the more you can experiment and you and do different styles with it. And I just want to mention that it's very durable and secure i work out in them and to just put my hair back look, look, click, that's it and it stays in place while i'm doing whatever running or whatever and it stays in place so i just wanted to, to mention that i use them as well and they're very durable um and as you can see you know how quick you just <laughs> put that and bam that, <laughs> right it didn't take a whole Oh, project right two seconds Six. two seconds and no bobby pins and no you know not all that other foolishness is gonna be stabbing your brain all day so it, it and that's what it was that's what and actually to tell you the truth when i invented it i didn't realize i was gonna have so it would have so many benefits i literally was just like i'm tired of having a headache because right. of my hair i did not it really was my audience and my fans that really taught me 
all the different stuff and different styles that and all the different things that you can do with the puff cuff and it was my audience that taught me that it's not just for black women too right it was like there was right there were white women that would come up to me and be like oh i need that i get that and i'll be like mm, i don't know if it's for you boo <laughs> but then they were like no my hair is really really curly and i've been straightening it for 15 years and it's really just beat the hell out of my hair but i want to grow go back curly but i get so many headaches and it's like oh Oh, so you do get it and they they, they have the same issues that we right. do but we just don't talk about it across color lines right so when i realized the 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 mass appeal that puff puff has i was like whoa lord didn't really realize <laughs> Like you dropped something on me. Right, 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 right. Didn't know you was dropping all that, but okay, we gonna roll with it. We gonna roll with it. So um, the it's five sizes, correct? Yes. So I can show you right quick. So this is the original, and this is about this is the five inch. So it's about the size of a bagel. So people usually um, one thing that I, you have to kind of like be willing to brain dump and expunge all the stuff that you've learned before because mm -hmm. typically people would say oh my hair is really short so i need the smallest one well no you don't need the smallest one you need the biggest one because you do not want to pull hair in short hair into a small circle if you're right. doing that that's going to cause more damage cause mm -hmm. more pain and everything else so what it's doing is once you use this big one you know you gather it as best as you can or if you can't gather it all you know, flat twist the edges, you know, there's plenty of videos that I had because I just I grew my hair out from having it. I think when I was, no, when I was, uh, forgot when it was, maybe it was, it was pre pandemic. I cut all my hair off um, and then grew it out. So there's some videos I have on YouTube of me putting the puff cuff in and my hair is much shorter. But the whole rule of thumb is whatever size your hands are when you have your hair gathered at and your um at the base of your puff nearest to your head like if i'm gathering short hair and i'm gonna gather it to this then you want to use this size mm -hmm. or if you just want maximum fullness so this is the original the five inch and then we have the junior which is like like three inches about the size of a tennis ball then we have the mini and we have them in clear also which is this is about the size of the top of a pop can and then we have the uh mini i mean the micro which is about the size of a golf ball and then the teeny and the whole whole concept like i said is the fingers are not meant to comb through your hair that's why they're really right. wide right mm -hmm. <laughs> They're meant to act like your fingers and just kind of like if you were to, you know, if you were just to get up in there and just hold your head like that, they're just holding the hair in place. They're not trying to glide through or, or, or comb. Right. That's not, that's not it. They're just holding the hair in place and what happened, I mean, the, the clip in place. And they're not adjustable because if anything is moving and adjusting in your head, that's, that's sawing them strands. That's yep. just breaking your hair off. I don't care how much people think, well, it stays in place. No, at first, I ain't telling the truth. If I know that sucker slide, slid with all the gel that you, yeah, I knew it, I know it moved. But when you see people, I always say, do the, do the breakage test. And the breakage test is if you, when you gather your hair up like that in one hand and do this. And if you see hair that's coming down, that's about the same length as where it hits that band in your head, that means that's, that's, that's causing breakage. Yeah. So, so. You know, elastic bands are not, they were never invented for us, but that's all we had. That's all we had. So now we have something different. So, um, do you want to also talk about your other products as, as well? Sure. Sure. It's fine with me. So, um, I have, I also invented a new take on the edge brush, which is called the edge master. <laughs> this right here. <laughs> <laughs> this right here <laughs> so first off i, I was i mean I, I am a baby right. hair you know queen because i didn't have any when you know when everybody was like mc light and all that when they was doing all that swoopy to suit i didn't have none man because 
the perm had broke it all off. <laughs> but now that now that I got some, you know, I, I have a very dear friend who's a um, a cosmetologist um, in um, in uh, New York in Schenectady, and she is always you know preaching the importance of of using good tools and quality quality yeah. products. And she was like, you know, I really want to get people to stop using um, the bore brush on their mm. edges because it's steadily breaking the hair off. She's yeah. like, I wish there could be a brush that had silicone teeth. And she was like, I don't have, I don't have the know-how or the um, experience to bring a product to fruition, but see if you can invent a brush that has silicone teeth. So that's exactly what I did. So right here, the teeth are silicone. So which leads to a, a couple of benefits. They, I ain't got no gel, but you kind of can see what is, you can do the same stuff. Mm -hmm. But what happens is <clears throat> these are much softer. These bristles are much softer on your edges. And the other thing is, is when you put, you can put this under water and rinse out all that nasty dirt makeup, gel, because you know it's some nasty toothbrushes sitting on some sinks right about now. <laughs> <laughs> you know it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we'll do it for so long and hopefully throw it away. Some of us don't. <laughs> right. You know, if we took a blue light to that sucker, it'd glow like me. Over. <laughs> <laughs> but with this, this is an investment. So you're not having to keep on replacing yeah. your tools. That was one thing when I came up with the Puff Cup, I was like, I'm tired of crap that doesn't work or only works for a week or two weeks mm -hmm. or maybe a month. Yes. And, and by the way, hey, the Puff Cups have a lifetime warranty on them. So if yours breaks, all you got to do is fill out a form and we will send you a new one. Yes. Now, don't send me nobody else's knockoff product because I'm not going to replace that. <laughs> you go to the Chinese shop and maybe you'd be like, that's a puff cup. No, it's not. As a matter of fact, you let me know where they don't, are. because Don't try to do a form. Right, 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 right. Let me know who they are because I got to have to have a cease and desist delivered. But back, back to this. So you just put it under the water, click, hit it up against the side a few times, and you'll be amazed what comes out of you. you'll be like what, what comes out yeah. of this when when you are because you know everybody got their foundation whatever gel mm -hmm. you know and your baby didn't dropped it on the floor and da, da, right. da, da. but this so it's got you know this is the this is the this is what's different so this is actually the part that well all of it's patented but this is specifically to this brush then you have the spatula like all the other ones and then you have the um the long tooth for parting. Actually, this is a, the first rendition of it because the, the second version that I did, the, the tooth is much more pointed instead of round. Um, but this for the, this tooth for parting as well as taking your braids down. So this is the Edge Master. So this is another um, product that we have. We also have uh, puff cuffs for men because there's so many guys that are growing out their hair. Did you hear? Um, it's for men. For men. For men. Yes, yes, yes. It's called the PC Mail. Um, if you go to our website, there's a bar across the top that says shop PC Mail, the Puff Cuff Mail, because men have such gorgeous curls. Yeah. And after the pandemic, they were growing out their hair like, you know, no problem. And they haven't destroyed their curls with color and heat and everything else. So, and they were like taking their girlfriend puff cuff but they wouldn't go buy a puff cuff <laughs> off the site themselves so it was like okay we see you we I, see you i got you i got you i got you so we have puff cuff mail and both sites we have a line of consumables um and tools that kind of complement the whole curly hair routine so we wanted to you know have like a one-stop shop where you can go and get everything you need the only thing we don't do um, we do for the men, but not for the women. I don't do shampoos and conditioners, mainly because there's enough folks out there already doing shampoos and conditioners. And people usually have their own, you know, their favorite. Their, I mean, I have mine. You know, my, con my conditioner is uh, Balanced by AG Naturals. You, I will fight for that. <laughs> that. <laughs> Even though I can't use 
it no more because I can't put <laughs> conditioner on my life. And girl, I guess it was, it was AG Naturals uh, balance or boost and Uncle Funky's daughter. Mm. Oh, I'd be like, I, we would, if we do any shows, I go and see if, if Renee, Renee, yeah, see if Renee is there, I'd be like, y'all, you know, selling cases. <laughs> At the end, you know, put me a box to the put side. Put mine to the side. Right. Put my box to the side. I got that's mine. <laughs> but you know, everybody has their favorites, but there wasn't um there's only like a few options in terms of styling products to complement um no matter what type hair you have. Mm -hmm. So we have like a, a styling gel, a um edge control, a serum, a mist. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the one making this stuff but i know where it came from <laughs> i um i partner with a black chemist out of uh texas Me? and i her formulas because i was like i gotta make sure that um i know what's mm -hmm. in this stuff mm -hmm. and i use i gotta make sure at the very at the very 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 minimum i'm not allergic because i'm not going to sell anything to anybody else that i don't use mm -hmm. myself and i don't know what's in it and um because most of the stuff in that 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 beauty supply, y'all, the Chinese shop beauty supply, that's a whole nother conversation. Like what I found out on that that piece, it will blow your mind. Like I feel like I need to do, do a documentary. But anyway, majority of those products are not made in the United States. Mm -hmm. They're not mm -hmm. regulated. What they've done is bought up a lot of those companies that were originally black owned and bought all the rights bought the distribution yeah. bought the product bought all the ip they take it back over across mm -hmm. the across the ocean yep. put whatever they want to put in that bottle and they already own the distribution channel so there's nobody even to fact check any of that and they bring it right back to your neighborhood and sell it to you and we wonder why black women have fibroids more than any other race of folks but like I said, that's a whole other conversation. But, we'll do that next time. But relevant, <laughs> but relevant. <laughs> but relevant. So I, you know, I definitely just wanted you to touch on um, on your other products. I know Puff Cuff is the baby. That's the yes. foundation. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I know you have some other great um, items and products as well. And just to throw it out there that the Edge Masters will be in our blessing bag. So for those that are going to be recipients in august you're going to get one of these lovely and if if you don't mind i could take one for myself <laughs> oh you know you got i put it i throw an extra one up there for you <laughs> those will will be included so we thank you for for that donation um and just so before i get into to my last question just a quick sidebar um you know, for our blessing bags, we reach out to natural hair um, brands and, and company, things like that. And we get, you know, donations and they'll send their items and their products. And I'm very thankful and, and, and blessed for that. That's why we are able to provide the natural hair blessing. But to have, have um, a, a black brand such as yours to say, yeah, I can give you product. Like, that's not a problem. I can send you stuff all day. Well, not all day, but, you know. Right. I can send <laughs> I can send you items, but I also want to have a discussion. Like I also want to do an event. I also want to take time out um, to, you know, to talk about natural hair. So that is new for me. So oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Um, you know, we again, we get the donations and things like that. But for a, a company to say, hey, can we take a moment to like have an event and do something? Um, and recently we had another company reach out to us, but I think it was because of you. <laughs> um, and ah. that in the foundation um, for that. So I just wanted to just mention that. And I'm going to probably mention it before we get off because I'm just so grateful um, for that. Um, so I want to, um, and I just have one final question. And it kind of leads to our giveaway um, that we're going to do. And I wanted to know what program or programs um, that you currently have in the works that focus on um, natural hair care or products for youth. So um, we've been trying to, and I'm glad you asked that question because it's really appropriate right now with back to school and all yeah. that's happening. 
Um, we have been trying to uh, launch for the longest time our coils and curls care kit. So it's coils and curls, kind of like boys and girls, mm -hmm. um, curl care kit. And what it is, it is a, um, and I failed to get one, but it's a kit. I felt I was going to stop by my office and get one on the way here and totally blanked out. But anyway, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Them grits and sausages was calling my name and I was like, I gotta eat. <laughs> but, um, so it's a kit that will have a puff cuff pack of the person's choice and then a uh, travel size versions of the um, laid hairline. So the laid hairline is because, you know, everybody wants your hair to be laid. <laughs> so it's L-A-A, three A's, L-A-A-A-Y-E-D. So it will come with, I think it's a, a mousse, um, the edge control, our velvet souffle, I believe a, a curl, um, the argan oil curl um, defining gel. All of that comes in it and a couple other things, but it's just like something for back to school, you know, just to try it out. It's not cheap. I'm going to tell you that it's not a box that's like, you know, right. that it's because it, these one thing that I learned long ago, if you put in cheap, you get out cheap. So that's when you write, when you put cheap stuff in your hair, you're going to, you're going to look cheap. So, and it's like, so all of our products are very, um, high quality and concentrated. So a little goes a long way. So these are a um, little bit bigger than like sample size products, but there's, they're in jars and tubes. You're not gonna like, you're gonna get a bunch of packets <laughs> when you get there. Right. Um, and so that was our back to, that will be launching soon. And then also we are um, creating a space to work with HBCU students that, um, we want to help build that community. There are so many HBCUs. I'm not an HBCU grad, but I'm down here in Atlanta and it is, you know, it's a very serious right. the HBCU thing is a very serious thing. So in order for us to be able to tap into that audience and provide stuff for where the, those kids are in their life, in terms of the State that they're in, whether they need, I mean, they, they're the ones that generation kind of communicates the whole, um, what do you call it? They're fashion forward. They're the ones that, you know, they're the ones that establish the trends is what I'm saying. So we're going to tap into that as well as pay them to represent the product and they can earn a commission or they can do, you know, um, posts or whatever. Plus we'll keep them, um, keep them stacked with swag so but it's just a matter of oh i want to i want to be one right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and i don't believe in cheap swag i don't believe in i don't do cheap i don't because i'm not I'm, i wouldn't ask you to wear something that i wouldn't right. wear myself and i'm not i'm not i would say i've become more bougie the older i've gotten but i still i like a good bargain but i don't like cheap right which we know there's a difference yes Yes. So, so that the HBCU initiative is called the College Curl Crew. So on the website, there's actually a form and everything, but we're, since school is getting ready to hop back in, um, we're getting ready to dive, you know, uh, hands first into that, just to trying to get some more, um, get some cash in these folks. I mean, it's like, we can help each other. And I know that my whole mission i mean puff cuff is the is the springboard to my real my main mission and my main mission is to be that source of consult experience advice or whatever for anyone that looks like me embarking on, on this journey of small business or entrepreneurship or whatever that they just need to be able to talk to someone because a lot of times I know, you know, you feel like an Island of one and it's like, this is not fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this, this affects your mental health, your physical health. Mm -hmm. But when God has charged you with something and you're trying to 
do the best you can and it's not easy it is not easy and yes black businesses it ain't no hype we are starting leagues behind everyone else yeah because we don't come from we don't come from the people that were allowed to do that on a regular basis mm -hmm. so a lot of times we're the first well like in the beginning you were like she's the first uh, that's that's like a bittersweet thing for me because i'm like okay how many other women have invented something that just didn't go right. on just for some reason or another was not able to get it patented i don't want to be i don't want to, i hold that as a bittersweet honor my what will bring me sweetness is when i hear i'm the she's the second he's the fourth he you know to hold so many patents for you know a, a tool within the united states because half the girls half the stuff that we use today was invented by black people oh, yeah. we weren't allowed to one right <laughs> Would have been it fell apart if it wasn't for what we invented so yeah that is <laughs> so um we are going to give away one of those awesome awesome boxes that she was just talking about and i really have no rhyme or reason or, or how we're gonna <laughs> do the giveaway um but i think i want to ask a question and i guess whoever gets this question so that means you have to be listening you had to really uh oh you had to uh -oh. really you, you had listen. to have your listening yeah ears on. You had to be listening. <laughs> um and don't don't cheat and try to go on the website real right, quick. <laughs> right. this is not phone right. a friend we are right. not right you're not doing a lifeline nope. uh -uh. so if you can, whoever can tell me, the first person that can tell me where Puff Cuff was founded. Ooh. Because we didn't talk about that. And I didn't mention a little it, bit. You mentioned it. Like, yeah, you I slightly did. mentioned it. I did. So, I, did. I really want to see who was listening. So, the Ooh. first. <laughs> so, I'm going to give it a, a minute or two. You might have to and... ask a second question. <laughs> And I want to, I want to see if anybody caught that. <laughs> Let's give it. I don't a, think anybody. Like, uh, yeah, I don't, that was very yeah, was like undercover. It was. It was I mentioned that, subtly. right? It was in there subtly. I want to see. Mm -hmm. So nope. no, Georgia is where it currently is now, right? Am I correct? Mm -hmm. is, is where your headquarters is currently, right? Um. But good try. Good try. <laughs> Illinois. Hey. Yay. Hey. Yes. Yes. You are so right. She probably know me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what is it? Is it? It's Ethel B. Oh, okay. Ethel B. Yep. Ethel um, B. Yay. Yep. She got so, it. So yes. It was founded in Chicago, right outside of Chicago. Yes. Yes. Yes, thank you for catching that. <laughs> she, she stayed on from the whole thing. Y'all, yes. right, you deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> so send me your mailing address. I will make sure that you get that. Um, and as she mentioned, these are, you know, these are, are great items. Um, a little bit goes a long way. So I think your son will also enjoy it as well. I know you mentioned about your son having locks um, earlier in the live um so again just dm me your your mailing address and we'll make sure that you you get that so thank you no of you we received a similar grant oh, oh okay <laughs> nice okay well i need to talk to both y'all i need a grant right <laughs> right right i need oh, some help so, that's, um, so um that's look, another conversation we that's a whole nother, yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole nother. You know what? Because we're still, you know, and my thing is get it while it's hot because, you know, we were the, we were, black women were the flavor of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of guilt going around that's giving out money, but it's going it to eventually. It's going to dry up. They'll get, it's going to dry up. Yeah. They'll get distracted. Yep. Yeah. So, um, is there anything you would like to mention before I kind of give some, some announcements? Um, I would say just, you know, everyone kind of follow the Puff Cuff, stay tuned on our social media. We've got actually, um, next month is our 10th anniversary. So wow. we will be celebrating 10 years and, um, usually on those milestones, you know, we do a, a, a heck of a deal in some type of way and, um, just be ears open. We got a lot of things going on. I mean, this year was very, very rough for us 
which with all consumer brands, I think it's, you know, it's been tough, especially e-commerce, but um, like, a like um Celie said, I'm still here. Yeah. I'm still here. Yes. <laughs> so innovating and, and coming up with new ideas. And I think that's that's what keeps you relevant Thank as you. well is coming up with those those new ideas. So um I just want to give a few announcements. Again, I just want to shout out Visions of Bell. Again, their conference is August 9th. If you are in in the East Orange, New Jersey area, please um, follow that page so that you can purchase your, your tickets for that conference. Um, this live will be available on the Embracing My Natural um, platform. So if you missed it, you can always come back to the conversation and replay it as many times um, as you, you want to. Um, also, tomorrow is the deadline for our Natural Hair Blessing Bags for the August distribution. So if you're interested in being a recipient, you need to either go on our website or click the link in our bio to um, fill out the application so that you can be considered um, for this, um, this distribution um, in August. Our next distribution will not be until December. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, and then also, quick little plug, also with the, with the nonprofit, is that we've recently... Um, reopen the opportunity for individuals to receive free head wraps. So if you like to wear head wraps, um, we are soliciting individuals that are interested in getting free head wraps. And there's an application on our website for that. And we're also always looking for people to volunteer or to offer their time and service to the nonprofit so that we can continue to do events like this, um, and whether they're virtual or in-person. Um, for for the community. So all of that information is in our bio and it's also on our website. And I want to end again. <laughs> Girl, I'm not you. Gonna, thank you so I, much. I, I, I said I wasn't, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait till, till I end the live. But um, I, I know uh, Miss Cita, she took time with me last week and we talked. Um, we talked and I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, her taking the time to speak with me. Um, I think our call was supposed to be 15 minutes, but it was more than 15 right, minutes. We were, right, it was way more than 15 minutes. It was way more than 15 minutes. Um, so I thank you for your time. Again, talking with us today, utilizing your time. I know you are a busy woman. Again, I only read a little snippet of her bio, so you can just imagine, um, you know, being a business owner is, is not easy. Um, so I thank you for your time and your donations. And again, I appreciate all the products that you are going to send us for our blessing bags. I'm sure the community is going to definitely appreciate. I hope so. Those I hope they love it. And Ethel B, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I send it. I'm not even going to let you know. Yeah, I need it. <laughs> <laughs> for hair wraps. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And I, and Ethel B has actually donated um, head wraps before we, um, actually bonnets, I'm sorry. We did a, an event, Loving My Bonnet. It kind of came out of Monique's, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, view on wearing bonnets in public. So we kind of had a, a, a discussion on that and, um, a couple of companies supplied us with bonnets for it. Um, I so haven't done that yet. I have not done that. The bonnet. Atlanta, Atlanta Hartsfield, I'm like, wow, it really is a thing. People are wearing their bonnets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Missy, I don't, I don't want you to go, but I know you gotta go. I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful that you you took the time out to to be with us today. I this is this was wonderful. I'm so glad we were able to, you know, make it more than just the here's the product because I love I love talking to people. My right. thing is. I think you went mute for a second. Oh, I'm sorry. There I'm a, yeah, there we go. So just saying, I love talking, love talking with you. And this, this opportunity was fabulous. So make sure that you're following. If you're not already, you have to be following Puff Puff. Like, I mean, where are you if you're not? You have to be, <laughs> <laughs> you 
We have to follow. And yes, um, Visions, uh, Visions of Bell said, I love your energy. And I do too. Even when we talked last week, just a very humble and, and down to earth um, individual. And I appreciate it. <laughs> Girl, we all do. We all try and, you know, just do better and, and, and make it one way or another. So we all put our panties on the same way. So we just <laughs> So we are going to end it here. I don't think we have any additional questions. I think I kind of addressed everything as we were going. Again, make sure you are following both platforms. And again, we thank you for your time. And this live will be available in a few minutes if you want to go back and and listen to our wonderful conversation. Again, thank you, Miss Sita. Thank you, Miss Sita. Mega K. <laughs> All right. I appreciate it. Take care. Have a great Sunday. Okay, you too. Be blessed. Bye. -bye. Bye.